Good morning, everybody. Oh, I tell you what, you know, that you've got your friends and then you've got your Christian friends, and there's nothing like the latter. And it's just good to be among Christian folks, I'll tell you what. We've got some first-time visitors, and I'm going to mess up something I always do, so y'all just bear with me. Sitting over here on this side over here is a, is a Liz, Liz Ball, you raise your hand, Womper, all right. And then that's, but next to her is Emily Peterson. And the next to her is Sarah Donnell. And over here, I think I, I didn't get her last name, but Beth. You all right? And I've got Ju, Ju huh? She's my boss. So. <laughs> She's in the district office. So. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll have to talk to you. And then Jules, there she is, raise your hand, and I, I, I missed your name. Say it out loud. All right, all right, all right. These are now. Who else have I missed? I think there might be some other folks. Raise your hand if you're a first-time visitor. No. Jules, there she is, raise your hand, and I, I, I missed your name. Say it out loud. All right, all right, good. All right. These are now. Who else have I missed? I think there might be some other folks. Raise your hand if you're a first-time visitor. No. <laughs> i tell you what, boy, you, you can't. I have to ask for raise and pay. The, uh, all right. Charge conference. Preacher, you want to say anything about that? is in Baldwin County, Putnam County. Your presence just lets the district superintendent let other people know you care about the business of the church. So uh, I don't think it lasts long, and uh, and, and let's, let's be there. We are highlighting culinary camp. That's our first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, featured ministry, yeah. All right. You got an Advent Church Council meeting on Monday at 630. Then next Sunday is the fall picnic, and that's... Uh, that's a, that's a very nice experience. I'll just leave it at that. And then we're going back out to Angela's uh, property. And uh, Angela, where are you? Oh, there you are. We'll be at her property, and it's, um, it's a wonderful place to get together. Daylight, I'm going to stop after the next one. I'm going to take it. Daylight saving time will be on the 3rd, and then the rest of that will be, we've got time to take care of that uh, next Sunday. And um, I want to just say one little thing. Uh, you wonder how we find these, these students and things like that. Elizabeth came to us by way of a professor, Dr. Schiffner, and he has, he has got a, he teaches a class, and what he's teaching, he's taking his class, and he's got, of course, young adult women and men, and he's assigning them to go out, they're doing a the thing on Vietnam, and he's assigned them to go out, and the girls will be interviewing the wives and doing a full documentary, camera and everything. She came out to our house the other day and the other night and, and we're not through. And we wrapped up about 11, 1145 that night. But we, uh, she is doing the thing on Gale and, uh, and all of that. And then uh, they've assigned a gentleman to be and he'll be here a week from Sunday. And when I get to go, and he will be interviewing me. And then they have to put all that together in a documentary. And I guess that's how they get their grade. But isn't it amazing sometimes how you meet college students? And, uh, and we're just glad you're here. We invited them, and, and we want you to come. We want you to continue to come. Uh, this, this is a great church. It's, it's, it's just, it is just a wonderful place. Anything else? All right. Gail and I were saying earlier that sometimes people wonder about the next generation, but those who are worried about the next generation don't know the young people that we know. We are so grateful for how they bless us week after week. We'll be, today is Laity Sunday, and there are sp scriptures that speak to that. Romans 12, 4 through 12 says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. 
If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If it is serving, then serve. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And 1 Corinthians 12, um, 12 through 27, parts of it, says, Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, then where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And I think that's what we do so well here in Hopewell. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So it's our uniqueness and our unity that we celebrate today. And it is in that spirit that we now worship.
Rose and George Beverly Chase style. Ready? Right. Here we go. Please. singing hymns, go to Becca, she will teach you to sing and dance at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Um, if you'll join me in reciting uh, the bold face print. From the beginning, God entered into covenant with the human family, with Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Deborah, Ruth, and Jeremiah. Through, Through baptism, baptism, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ calls us into the covenant and makes us ministers of Christ's righteousness. righteousness. All Christian ministry is Christ's work of outreaching love. It demonstrates a common life of gratitude and devotion, witness and service, celebration and discipleship. All Christians are called to Christ's servanthood in the world, to the glory of God and for human fulfillment. The church, as the community of the new covenant, participates in Christ's ministry of grace. It stretches out to human needs wherever service may convey God's love and ours. In our ministry of servanthood is this ultimate concern. And all may be renewed in the image of the Creator. And that all Christians are called to minister in deeds, words, that heal and free. Amen.
Lord, we just thank you for the day and thank you for allowing us to, to get together and express your uh, greatness in the presence of others, Lord. Um, we just ask that you send your healing to all the prayers that we have and the, the concerns for these people who need your healing and these people who also need your strength. And we pray for, for their healing and their strength and their recovery, Lord, that you'll send your power um, to take care of them. And we know that these things will be done in your name, Lord, and uh, that your will will be done in their lives and in our lives. And it was you who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In this last day, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I have something not up my sleeve, but in my pocket. Ah. <laughs> okay. What is this? A dollar, a dollar right? So mm, what could we buy with a dollar? Pencil? we Pencils? Lollipops? Lollipops? Ice cream? Okay, what if this was a $100 bill? 
Then what can we buy? We can buy some furniture, some kid furniture. <laughs> some kid furniture, okay. Maybe some Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. You gotta add a lot of zeros behind that. Okay. Clothes, yeah. Okay. Is that still a dollar? Yeah, but it's crumbled up. It's crumbled up, right? But can I still go out, let's say, in a perfect world? Well, you can, at Dollar General, buy a candy bar for less than a dollar. Okay, so we go to Dollar General. What's your favorite candy bar? Kit Kat. Kit Kat? Huh? You don't know? Twix. I like Twix. Hershey's. Sour Patch Kids. That's not a candy bar. Candy? That's okay. Just think of it in your head. So, if I crumble this dollar up, does it change the dollar? Well, it's smaller. It's smaller, but can I still go buy that candy bar? Yes. Okay, can you step on that, please? Squish it just a little. Okay, yep. Perfect. Squish it just a little bit. Perfect. Will you also do the same thing? Is the dollar changing? It's still worth what? Yeah, but it's still worth what? It's still worth Still worth a dollar, right? So I could still go buy that candy bar. Mm -hmm. Yes? Because it doesn't change anything about the money. money, right? So if we just like rubbed it in the dirt, right? It's not as pretty, which is okay. It's a little what? A little crumbled, a little dirty, right? But it's still a dollar. So we are like this dollar. So sometimes we get crumbled. Maybe we don't do well on a test. Maybe we're just having a bad day. We don't get enough sleep. Or maybe we're just not feeling it, right? Or lots of things are happening that are out of our control. But our value is still in Christ. No matter how many times we get stepped on or how many times we feel like we're being twisted, our value in Christ is the same, just like this dollar, no matter what it goes through, is still worth what? One dollar. Wowzer. So no matter how like down in the dumps you feel, or maybe all these things aren't going your way, you're still a child of God. No matter what happens, the Lord still wants you. The Lord still loves you. Just like this dollar is still worth a dollar, no matter if we find it in the trash can or find it on the counter. Cool? So now we're going to pray. Repeat after me, only if you feel comfortable. Okay? Hey, God. Um, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the way that you know us, the way that you deem us your children, God, um, that no matter um, what trials come our way or whatever days we feel down or like we're twisted or we're, we're just this dollar that's all crumpled up, Lord, but that our value still lies with you, and we thank you for that, and we love you for that, um, and in Jesus' name, amen. And all God's people said, but amen. Our hymn of preparation is number 405, Seek Ye First. Would you stand as we sing, please? for being here. I'm glad you're here. Uh, you could have been other places, but you decided to be here, and for that I'm grateful. Um, so this morning, what I thought we could do and what I'd like to share is a little bit 
um, about myself and my journey um, with God and what he showed me um, over the past couple of years. <clears throat> and basically what he showed me uh, was sin. And if we'll turn to the book of James, uh, chapter 4, we'll read from the scriptures for a second. <clears throat> James 4 says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your own pleasure. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is, hate, is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do, or do you think scripture says without reason that the spirit he, he caused to live in us envies intensely? But he gives you, but he gives us more grace. That is what the scripture says. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself then to God. Resi resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and, pur and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the, the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? <clears throat> the word of God for the people of God. I can say I want to talk a little bit about myself and you know, what this, what God has shown me. And I want to start back with, uh, we'll go back a little ways in why I decided to do this. You know, I think being a lay speaker, uh, you know, some people look at it and it's not necessarily what you're doing, but it's the reason that you're doing something that's the most important. And the reason I, that I was doing it and I, that I am doing it is because for a long time within me, there's an emptiness, you know. And I don't think, when I say emptiness within me, I don't think I'm alone. I think we all have this emptiness within us. You know, I think it's something that we all can, can understand. <clears throat> um, and that emptiness can only be filled with one thing, you know. And that's God. And that's not really a good description. It's hard to kind of see that. So I was thinking about, you know, how can we make, what can we use as an analogy, so to speak, or a description to kind of see that? So I thought about it, and I, I said, you know what? In my parents' house, there's a chair. There's a recliner. There's a, a seat. And that seat is Dad's seat. And that's where Dad sits. And everybody knows that this is dad's seat, right? And I think everybody here can understand that same analogy. You know, we all have a chair in the house somewhere, and that's where dad sits. You don't sit in it, and if you do sit in it when he comes in the room, you get up and you let him have it, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the whole point of it. And that is what we have in us. We have a seat. We have a chair inside of us. And that chair is for God to sit in. Nothing else can sit in that chair, you know. It's just for him. He made us. He made us with that chair in us, and that is his spot. Now, I said I want to talk about sin, and I do because I'm going to define sin right now. And my definition of sin is anything we put in that chair besides the Lord. That is what sin is, you know. So, well, maybe that's a stretch. No, it's biblical. You know, you look at what Jesus said in the book of Matthew, 
the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, and that is my definition of sin. It's those things that we put in that chair or that we allow to get in that chair uh, in place of God. That's where we become wrong. And that's where over the past little, little while where I've been doing lay speaking and, and studying and stuff, is I've realized that I was wrong, is that there was a whole lot of things that I was putting in that chair, you know. And that's where I think the devil gets at us too because he takes things and he can manipulate it with things that seemingly aren't bad. You know, stuff isn't bad, things aren't bad. He can use those things to put in those spots, in that spot, in God's chair, you know, to distract us. But we think, well, you know, that's it's not really that bad, you know. So take, for instance, people, you know, family, mothers, fathers, children, grandparents. Those things aren't bad, right? Relationships, these aren't bad things. It's just where do they fit in our lives? When we put those people, when we put those things in God's chairs, that's where we're wrong. You know, Jesus said, oh, there was a man, he said, follow me. And he said, Jesus said, well, wait and let me go bury my parents first and then I'll come back. He said, let the, bury, let the dead bury the dead. You know, so sometimes those people, sometimes those relationships in our lives can get in the way. You know, hobbies. You know, everybody loves hobbies. There's nothing wrong with having hobbies. But my hobby is golf. If I let golf get in the way of my relationship with God, I'm wrong. You know, if I put that before God, then I'm wrong. And there's lots of things. So you, success, work, anything that we have that we put before God is a sin. He wants to be that center focus on our lives. He wants to be number one. Now let's talk about other things too. Talk about people, family type stuff. What about material things? That's always the big one, you know, material stuff. Now, this thing right here that everybody's got takes a lot of our time, takes a lot of our focus. You know, if we spent a tenth of the time, you know, looking at God's word, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else <laughs> of looking at this thing too much, you know, we, we would have a better relationship with Christ. You know, take the, the things. Everybody likes things, you know, stuff. I want a car. You know, I like the boat. You know, all these things. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Those things are perfectly fine. It's just where those things play a part in our lives and where they sit. Do we put them in God's chair or do we let God sit in his chair? And we just enjoy him, you know. Um, another thing about material things, think about the story of Judas. You know, Judas gave up Christ for 30 pieces of silver, right? I mean, was the 30 pieces, was the silver wrong? Was the silver the sin? So no. There's nothing wrong with silver. It's a metal. You know, it's nothing. It's not good or bad. It's where we put it in our lives that make it good or bad. Those are the things that we've got to look for. And those are the things that we've got to pray and ask God to show us. Say, what are we putting in our lives before you? Because the devil, he don't want you to see those things. He wants to continue to say, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with these things. These things are perfectly fine. And he's not wrong unless we put them before God. That's when they become wrong. Um, look at, you can also put things before God, put things in, in God's seat within us for uh, as far as emotions, anger, fear, you know, uh, afflictions, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, fear is not a bad thing. If you see a snake and you jump so the snake doesn't get you, well, you were scared. That's fear. So it helps you survive sometimes, you know. But if you let fear run your life, then we're really not trusting in God, right? So these things aren't bad. Look at afflictions within us, you know. Think depression, anxiety, things of these natures, you know. These things are put within us to show God's strength, you know. These things are what, if you look at 2 Corinthians, um, take on which one of 2 Corinthians 12, Paul wrote that he was, had an affliction, a thorn in his side. He called it a messenger from God, or from the devil, you know. Uh, and he asked God to remove it three times, and God wouldn't do it. He said, no, no, and no. So, well, why not? He says, my grace is sufficient. 
my power is made perfect in your weakness. You know, and he went on. He didn't dwell on that affliction, whatever that affliction is. He didn't let that affliction sit in God's chair within his life. He went on and continued to do the will of God and allow God that number one sinner uh, seat in his life. You know, um, <clears throat> now that's, Um, all right, going back to Paul. Paul, Paul said that that's where his strength will be made strong within us, within that weakness, within that sin, right? And in that sin, what I believe and what I believe the Bible is telling us is that in that sin is where we find God, is where we find Jesus. Jesus didn't come for our smart intellect or our bursting bubbly personality you know he those things he doesn't really care about he cares about our sin and he wants us to give up those sin and in that sin and giving up that sin is where we're going to find the power of Jesus and the grace of Jesus you know it's not in the good things we do it's going to be in that sin is where the power of God is and I just pray that going forward what we can all do is ask God to reveal those sins and reveal those, that power that he gives us in our life over that sin because he's already won the fight. We just need to put him in his chair and let God do his thing. And I wish I could tell you how to do that, <laughs> but I can't because I think it's different for everybody. And I think that's where the personal relationship with Jesus comes into place is that you have to pray for these things you have to allow him that opportunity to show you those things. And I hope you do that moving forward. Um, thank you. And that's all I got. And um, we'll pray. Lord, we just thank you for the day. And thank you for this opportunity and this time together, Lord. And we thank you uh, for our weaknesses. We thank you for revealing our sins to us, Lord. And even though sometimes it may be a painful process, um, to change us. Lord, we know that you're perfect and, and your will will be done in our lives and you will uh, give us the strength and give us your grace to get through uh, whatever it is that we're going through. And we just pray to see your face, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think the first verse of our hymn of commitment um, kind of reflects what David was just saying because it says, Rise up, O men, and it could be rise up, O women, of God. Have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength to serve the King of Kings. Would you stand as we sing number 576? for another opportunity to be in your presence, Lord. And 
I just ask that you reveal to us just how beneficial being in your presence is, Lord. Um, I don't think that I can fully understand um, how much I need to be in your presence, Lord. And just open our eyes uh, to your wonderful majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.